from what I understand about this story, they were using an unsupported version of Windows with no firewall, and everybody had the same password. Am I, <laughs> am I right about this? <laughs> Good morning, Craig Peterson here. Had a great little chat with Mr. Matt Gagnon as we discussed some of our favorite things, including NASA. We talked a little bit about their new rocket propulsion using nuclear fuel. We also talked about our breached water plant, which is a bit of an issue, and why our car manufacturers are cutting back on manufacturing by a factor of two-thirds. So here we go with Mr. Gagno. We're talking to Craig Peterson, our tech guru. He joins us at this time every Wednesday to talk about the world of technology. Craig, how are you, sir? Hey, good morning. Doing well. I actually saw the sun this morning. You saw the sun? Amazing. <laughs> yes, it does exist. It is out there. Although I heard it's going to be a pretty cold night tonight. So yeah. well, you shall see. You know, Craig, I was reading something this morning. It was in the Press Herald, and it was talking about how everybody is, in fact, able to buy toilet paper today. And all those global shortages of the commodities that we saw early in the pandemic are mostly solved. There is still a pretty huge need in some areas, some places where you need to get some stuff that you can't really quite get. One of those is, interestingly enough, computer chips. This is something that we're seeing in a lot of different industries. I think I remember you saying to me a few weeks ago that this might be one of the ultimate culprits for why the PS5s aren't coming out uh, like gangbusters Mm -hmm. and some other things as well. Tell me a little bit about the shortage itself and what the White House wants to do about it. This is a really interesting, especially that last part, what the White House wants to do about it. Because of the lockdown, we had a lot of companies trying to guess, what are we going to need inventory-wise? The manufacturers of these various types of chips based it based on the orders that were coming in. They order these things months in advance. That is part of the problem we're having with the Sony Playstations and others. We've got our major manufacturers of cars, like Ford, for example, that has cut back from running three shifts to one shift because they cannot get the chips that they need inside of our cars. Our cars today are not just computers on wheels. They are dozens of computers on wheels, each car. It's been a real problem. That inventory is catching up. It will catch up pretty quickly. We can manufacture these things. It's not like the problem we had with hard drives being manufactured in Indonesia where they had massive flooding and it took all of these hard drive facilities offline. This was just because people didn't order at the right time and the supply chain got messed up. Now, what the White House is going to do about it, they're going to talk about it. They are going to identify potential choke points in the supply chain, according to the White House press secretary. Bottom line, there's nothing for them to do. There's nothing that they're going to do. This problem will fix itself. This is going to lead to shortages in cars and basically anything with a chip in it. Talking to Craig Peterson, our tech guru. He joins us now, as he always does on Wednesdays. Of course, you can hear him on Saturdays in some more depth and detail on this very station for his show, which you can hear at 1 o'clock p.m. Now, Craig, my favorite topic to chat about with you is always something space related. And there's always uh, some news and tidbits to sink your teeth into as it relates to to those types of stories. Elon Musk wants to go to Mars and developments and engines, all that kind of stuff. I did, however, read with great interest this uh, this tidbit that he had from Ars Technica about uh, NASA thinking that the only realistic plan for humans actually on Mars is with nuclear propulsion. Talk to me about this a little bit. Yeah, isn't this kind of neat? Uh, I just love to think about this because it's the future. Elon Musk and NASA both are using chemical-fueled rockets. These are the rockets that we've had in in use now for a very long time. Literal rocket fuel, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Good old chemical rocket fuel. The problem that we have is the cost involved. You have to use tons, thousands of tons of rocket fuel in order to just get pounds of, of payload up into space. The biggest problem is, of course, from the ground into orbit. So NASA originally planned our first moon launch 
to have a base that was circling the globe. This was back in the 60s, and it was basically going to be a refueling stop. The astronauts would go up there. The fuel would already be ready. It would be loaded into the rocket that's going to take them to the moon. There's still a whole lot of work on that concept when it comes to these Mars flights. When you get right down to it, carrying 100 tons to low Earth orbit, in other words, just to go around the Earth, not to go to the Moon or Mars, 100 tons, which is a lot of payload, that's going to cost about $2 billion using these chemical rockets. So NASA, back in the 60s, was also looking at nuclear propulsion. They've been getting budget for nuclear propulsion now for a long time. It looks like we're talking about a dramatically different way of doing it. Instead of having to have 4,000 tons of propellant to get up there, we're just talking about a, a few hundred when we're talking about nuclear. This is very fascinating. We've been using nuclear in space. The Russians have as well to run some of their satellites. In many cases, it's really worried us. The biggest reason NASA has not been a big proponent of this is the risk involved. If you've got all of that nuclear propellant on those uh, rockets, you could have an accident, just like we've seen with some of Elon Musk's rockets as he's trying to figure this whole thing out. Uh, and that could spread nuclear waste. There's concern involved. Right now, it looks like the only long-term solution we have for getting lots of colonists and supplies to Mars and beyond. Craig Peterson, our tech guru, joins us at this time every Wednesday to go over what's happening in the world of technology. Final question for you, Craig. There's uh, some utility stuff in the news, obviously, with all the power outages going on down south. There was also this story of the Florida water treatment facility who had a disastrous computer system failure. Apparently, from what I understand about this story, they were using an unsupported version of Windows with no firewall and everybody had the same password. Am I, <laughs> am I right about this? What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> this is what we're seeing as a result of the lockdown again. People working from home. That happened in this small Florida community, about 15,000 people. It's right outside of Tampa. They, of course, had the lockdown, but people still want water coming out of their taps. So what do you do? We're going to put TeamViewer on all of our computers so that people can get in from home. Now, what happened was, as you said, they were running Windows 7, and you can't get patches for it. They didn't have it configured properly, which is, by the way, why I'm doing this Improving Windows Security course in a couple of weeks. They moved quickly to get people to the point where they're able to work from home. Sound familiar? Because of that, they didn't lock things down. They didn't do it properly. The sharing of the passwords things is just absolutely unreal. Are you kidding me? Inside many of manufacturing plants and pretty much all of our critical infrastructure are what are called SCADA systems. These are systems that open and close valves and, and control physical properties of the plant. Somebody got onto this computer that was used to control the lye mix and it, it increased the amount of lye being added to the water by 100-fold. Just incredible. It could have caused very severe sickness to anyone that used the water, maybe even death. Now, the good news is some people who work from home are actually working. The guy that was monitoring this computer saw wait, somebody else is on this computer and uh, changed screens and increased the lie by a factor of 100. He immediately turned it down. Nobody was injured by this. But it does bring up again this problem. We moved very quickly to work from home. We didn't think it through. We didn't put proper safeguards in place. If they listened to WGAN, Matt, mm. they wouldn't know what to do. <laughs> the simple stuff here, sometimes that's the stuff we overlook the most. Indeed. Craig Peterson, our tech guru, joins us this time every Wednesday. Thanks a lot, Craig. Appreciate it. We will talk to you again next week, sir. All right. I'll be back Saturday, of course, at 1 p.m. Indeed. All right. 
By the way, everybody, I figured out what had been going on. I just noticed maybe a week or so ago that the feed at Apple Podcasts was not working. I was trying to figure out why hasn't it updated since November? It was like November 2nd or something. I couldn't figure out why I ran my podcast feed through a bunch of these online feed aggregator checkers because it was working everywhere else. I had to do the process of elimination and figured out the problem was Apple didn't like the dimensions of my artwork. (laughs) They apparently are very picky. They want your artwork to be square, somewhere between 1500 by 1500 pixels, and 3,000 by 3,000 pixels. I made a little piece of artwork, I'm not terribly happy with it, but whatever, uh, that was 2,000 by 2,000 pixels. And lo and behold, the next day, it shows up. So I think that's pretty darn cool. My podcast download numbers went way up. So welcome back, all you guys. Sorry about that. I didn't even notice that it wasn't working. I'm sure some of you guys complained. Um, you, I might have missed that email. Take care, everybody. I'll be back this weekend. Bye-bye.